Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, how is everyone doing this morning? Um, we're gonna get this going real soon. Yes. We've got an exciting morning for you this morning. Thank you for joining us as always with Faith and Fire International, Samuel and Corinne here. And we love spending our mornings with you and your evenings, wherever you're watching from. Yes. And I'm just trying to get my separate laptop to work here so I can actually see everything. Look at that. Well, okay, I can see it. I can see it through my wife's. This is good. We can do it this way. <laughs> Honey, why don't you greet the people this morning? Ask them where they're watching from. Yes, okay. Yes. Sorry, thank you everybody for bearing with us. We're just getting some technical stuff figured out. Uh, but yes, we are so excited to be teaching today. And thank you for joining us. We were looking forward to doing a little bit more frequent broadcasts. Um, so we were kind of yes. discussing, you know, Mondays or, you know, well, we're gonna different be, times. Yeah, and we're also going to be moving soon. Yeah, we will be moving soon. So Moving in January. Yes. Uh, and once we're, like, kind of settled, we'll be able to really be, like, you know, up, up the broadcasting, up everything we're doing. Yes. Hello, Mrs. Susie. And yes, get the uh, have have Sander find us. That's great. So yeah, we'll be moving, um, and you know we'll be basing um, out of a new place. We're very excited for that. We'll announce everything yes, soon announce of the soon. where and everything. Um, yes, yes. Hey, Sander. Hey, brother. How you doing? Hi, Sander. Yeah. And again, anyone for watching us this morning, why don't you go ahead and um, share this broadcast on your Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, wherever you're watching from this morning. We broadcast on all, of course. And, you know, um, as we broadcast more and more, people will know where to find us and where to, you know, watch from. So this will grow and grow. Um, and also very excitingly, you know, we talked about vision last week. So I yeah. think it's important to cast vision. Yes. Uh, hey there, from The Hague. I think it's important to cast vision, of course. Um, so it's like, just know that this look... This, this, you know, kind yeah. of quality, this will be, you know, this if will be over soon. Knew, what else is around? But we, we will up, yeah, <laughs> if you knew the apartment we're in right now. Um, but yeah, moving on to bigger and better things. Um, so we are going to be upping our game in everything. So, you know, the broadcasts are going to look so much better. The, the studio is going to be much better. Yeah. Everything's going to a new quality and a new level. Um, right. So just thank you for being on this journey with us. Yes, we, we'll, and yeah. Thank you. We're going to have a great morning. Sorry, I'm like, I'm like still. Sam doesn't like technology. So when it isn't cooperating, he's singular focused. The Lord has to, the Lord, the Lord has to keep me <laughs> when technology is not doing what it's supposed to. Yeah, it's great news. Um, and again, we're so thankful with you guys on the journey with us. Yes. I'm also not a morning person. So I'm finding myself. <laughs> it's 11 a.m., but I still, I still count it as morning. I am a morning person. Corinne so, is very much a morning person. Tell us, are you a morning person? Morning. Are you an evening person? Let us know. Um, but yeah, we um, we function very differently. You know, Corinne is, uh, Corinne is like, it's 8.30 p.m. Oh my goodness, I should be in bed. I'm, yeah. I'm it's 8.30 p.m. Oh goodness, the night is just beginning. Yes. Uh, but then in the same way. Blessings from Pakistan, awesome. Yeah. Glad you're here to join us from Pakistan this morning. But the same way, she'll be up at like, you know, 6 a.m., and I'm like, you know, eight eight thirty. Then I'm starting to kind of, you know, wake up, become alert to the world, and trying to function. Amen. Yes. Trying to function. Praise the Lord. But you're gonna have a great morning with us this morning. We have a fantastic word for you, and we're with you twice this week because we love you. You guys are fantastic, and we want to spend as much time with you as we can. Amen. So this morning we're going to be talking about a one hundredfold more prosperous life. A one hundred. Okay. <laughs> You're an evening person. Yeah, me too. Me too. That's just me. It's evening here in Pakistan, 10 p.m. Well, then you must be an evening person because my wife would already be in bed. <laughs> A little seat, you know, again, exhausted. When we travel and we're on the road, it has it's a major adjustment and, and you do amazing with it because obviously when we're preaching, the times just go late. I can handle it. She can handle it. it. She does great. Her. Yes. And then she spends time with our friends and our friends, just about all of our friends and night people. Yeah. They're the type that wants to play like a really long card or board game 
and start it at like 10 30. yeah they want my friends want to start games at like 10 30 and corinne is like are you kidding me my brain is done yeah. let me go to bed but that's not what you're here for this morning but you know you can have some fun with us um we're gonna get this going now so let's go ahead and get this going we love you we're talking this morning about a 100 fold more prosperous life how to have increase and multiplication in your life a hundredfold. And the Bible is very clear on how you can increase and should increase in life. Um, so we're going to give you that key today. The Bible says that, you know, we are to give the keys of life and the keys of knowledge to the people. Yes. Jesus, in fact, spoke to the Pharisees and said, you have withheld the keys of knowledge from the people. So we know in life we're not supposed to, you know, find secrets and hold on to them. Right. Uh, and, you know, the people that we love, you know, um, and the, you know, Pastor Rodney, who we're under, he has always given away everything the Lord has ever given to him. Right. Always. Um, at one point, you know, he was like struggling in ministry financially. And uh, he said, Lord, you know, help me, he, you know, point me to the devil that's, you know, um, blocking my blessing. And the Lord told him to look in a mirror. Um, but then he also said, OK, Lord, you give me if you give me the keys in how to prosper in life, I promise I'll give them to everyone. I'll go everywhere and tell everybody how to prosper in life. And he did. He did. From him, he got that from Genesis 26, which I believe he actually got from Brother Jerry Seville, which is, you know, um, Isaac sow seed in a time of a famine. That's not one of the keys today, but I'm just saying it's, it's a good thing when you find keys in the word of God, you give them away because you want everybody to prosper and be doing well in everything. You know, we're not in competition. We're actually like, we're propelling to like get you guys forward as well as us. Uh, and the way that you help people elevate is to lift people up. Yes. You know, every a lot of people are looking for a, a lift up. A lot of people are looking for a stepping stone. A lot of people are looking for someone to help them. Mm -hmm. Well, if you actually want to increase and go somewhere in life, you actually, you know, help other people. Become a person that lifts other people up and you yes. will be lifted up. Amen. Be someone who is willing to work hard. Oh, yeah. Scripture where it's um, oh, yeah. labor is worthy of his wages. Oh yes. You know, you're not it, like what, what was Pastor Jonathan saying the other day? Where you know sometimes people just are weaving around for that blessing and breakthrough, and, and it wait really, for 20, 30, 40 yeah, years. You really do have to be hardworking and diligent mm -hmm. and put action towards you know the vision that God has for you. Truthfully, too, because again, um, when we stand before the Lord one day, and when you God's yeah, and when God actually has spoken in the past about, you know, the people, how he's going to address people, you'll find there's only a few ways that he's actually going to address us in the future. One of them is a good and faithful servant, which obviously that's what we all want to hear. But there was a way that he would address people who didn't live up to the standard. He would call them wicked and lazy. Yeah. Um, the par You know, the parable of the talents, the guy that dug his seed and dug it in the ground and hid it because he was afraid to use it. God didn't come to him and say, well, you know what? You just need some more wisdom keys. You know what? You just needed to, you needed a few more of these more things in life. Yeah. Um, no, he said, you wicked and lazy servant. Yes. <laughs> you know, again, this is a wonderful way to start the day. Um, but like my wife was saying, it's like um, hard work. Yeah. And again, hard work doesn't mean you run yourself into the ground. Sometimes you actually just need to be working smarter. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, they work hard, but they're not really getting anything done because everyone's busy. Mm -hmm. So you actually want to, you know, be knowing what the word says so you can actually be prospering so you can actually be prospering um easier and again i you know again you say prosper easy you know faith makes you know you'll always hear people say things like faith doesn't make things easy um but pastor jonathan kind of really broke us open in a lot of that stuff which is faith actually does things make things easier mm -hmm. the only trouble people have in life is their flesh the right. trouble people have in their life is actually living to the standard when you actually live to the standard of christ and follow him, things do become easier. Yes. I, is there persecution? Yes, but there's persecution always. Yeah. You know, are people going to come against you? Yes. But, you know, <laughs> perfect health, perfect prosperity, living free, living above sin, living in perfect righteousness. What about that doesn't sound easier yes. in life? No. What about those things sounds more difficult to, you know, to anybody who might be listening? You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. We love you all this morning, and we're glad you're here with us. Hallelujah. So let's get this going. Um, no, we <laughs> that was the preamble. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. A 100-fold more prosperous life. And um, if you have your Bibles, 
open them up to Luke 8 if you're driving. If you're in the office, you know, you have to sneak. You know, that, you know, you can just listen to us. But we're going to start in Luke chapter 8. We're going to start in verse 4. And we're just going to read a little bit of scripture for you here because this is going to be our main scripture. And we're going to bust this open today. So this is the parable of the sower in Luke chapter 8, verse 4. We'll start. When a large crowd had gathered together and the people were coming to him from every city, he told this parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed, and some fell on the path and was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on the rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. Yet some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up, and it was choked up. And other seed fell on good ground, and it sprang up and yielded a hundred times the amount sown. A hundred times the amount sown. That's very important. And then Jesus said, when he had said these things, he cried out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I'm going to uh, skip two verses now and let's go with me to verse 11. Jesus explaining the parable. Now the parable means this. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are those who hear. Then comes the devil who takes away the word from their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Those on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But they have no root, for they believe for a while, then the time of temptation fall away. That which fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the seed on the good ground are those who, having heard the word, keep it in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. Bear fruit with patience. So if anyone's watching right now and you want to add that scripture there, Luke uh, Luke 8, and we did verses 4 through 15. And we're going to bust this open today because there is truth in the word of God here that will help you increase and grow and multiply in life. And you will see prosperous prosperity bust open. And we're not just talking about financial. We are when you obey the word, but we're talking about prospering in life in every area. The difference between those who are really accomplishing something for the Lord and those who just kind of sit and watch. Those who are doing something for the Lord and those who are just content to stay small. Because God's intention for you is never to remain small. Amen. God's intention for you is to increase, multiply, advance every good word that you can think of. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Thank you, Jesus. So, a 100-fold increase in life. Let's bust into that right now. Making your heart good ground to receive the word of God directly affects the impact on your life and the impact your life will have. So, we know that we just read that in Luke 8, verse 8, and other seed fell on the good ground and sprang up and yielded a hundred times the amount sown. So, we're talking about here how to make your heart good ground how to make your life today good ground because when you make your life good ground you will increase multiply and advance 100 fold in life 100 times if you can actually again that's very difficult um of a measurement to measure in your life if you think about your life as it is right now imagine it 100 times better right now what does 100 times better look like right now because what does two times better look like what does a threefold better life look like? Can you imagine a hundredfold? Mm-hmm. I can. Amen. Amen. So think about that for a second. Yeah, thank you, Susie, there, adding that. So think about that right now. Your life a hundredfold more prosperous from this day. Because following Christ makes your life better. And again, we talked about this for a brief second, but again, it's like I always jump ahead of everything we're doing here. Uh, following Christ doesn't make life harder. Following Christ is not all about hardship. And a lot of Christians made it this way. In fact, we were listening also um, to Brother Jesse yesterday, right? We had a little bit of Brother Jesse. And he was talking about how um, when he had his encounter and went to heaven, um, he was actually talking with the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul said, "In you know, I wrote uh, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. He said, the church has made it a lifetime of affliction. I want you to, to make it a moment again. So it's again, people focus on all the wrong things. Yeah. And you know, so usually people focused on like storm to storm in life. Mm-hmm. And, 
or just every negative thing that happens. Totally. It's kind of a cliche and stuff, but it's, uh, it's, has anyone ever heard that saying? It's like what you focus on in life develops like, you know, kind of like a camera joke, but it's true. The things you focus on grow, the things you focus on, um, grain, uh, attain a greater stature. So focus is very important. And I know some of the other, this is um, Luke 8. There's also Mark 13 and Mark, uh, Matthew 13 and Mark 4 that this is in. And I know some of the other gospels, they'll say 30 uh, or 60 or 100 fold. Some of the other gospels, they say that. But in Luke, it says 100 fold only. And I'm teaching from that today. We're teaching from Luke. And we're believing for 100 fold in everything. Amen. We're faith people. We're not believing for 30 fold increase. We're not believing for 60%, 60 fold increase. We're believing for 100 fold increase in life for you in every area. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The mindset does have to change. The mindset does have to change. Did we do teaching on mindset for the broadcast yet? Um, was it one of our first ones? Have we done it? Like, let us know. I'm trying to remember right now if you remember any of this. Hey, hey, good morning, Shauna. Welcome from California. Hello, but let us know if we have actually, I'm not even sure if we have done a teaching on mindset. We may have, we may not have, but if we haven't, we will do one because it's a very important thing in life and it will help we you will in life. On it. I know I, I might have some notes on mindset quickly. That's good. Later on, but That's good. Ties in. Yeah. Good morning from California. Good morning. Um, so yes, um, we are believing here for the 100 fold. That's us. That's you. Yeah. Say that with me this morning. I will have a 100 fold increase. In my life. I'm believing you said that. I can't hear you, of course. Very tricky. It's thousands of miles away. Then let's go to the second part of Luke 8.8 8 there. When Jesus had said these things, he cried out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Uh, and this was the first of 15 times that Jesus told us to hear. And that if we have ears to hear, listen. He said it eight, uh, seven times during his earthly ministry, and he said it eight times in the book of Revelation. And whenever Jesus says this, pay attention. Him who has ears to hear, let him hear. He is telling you right now, sp pay specific attention. Look at what we're saying here. Look at what is said. Focus on this because this will help you in life. He wants you to get something that will change you and change your life for the better. Amen. So we're going to give you nine keys to make your heart good ground. We're talking about the 100-fold more prosperous life. These are the keys in this scripture that are going to help you to prosper in life in receiving the word. The way that you receive and live out the word of God and obey the word of God is what will bring the increase. This is going to be the difference maker in your life between a mediocre life and a ridiculous above the, you know, above the. You can imagine, ask, or think 100-fold life. So these are the keys right now from the Word of God that are going to help you. Amen? Hit us with it, honey. Uh, key number one is be ready. Amen. Be ready. Keep going. Uh, we have a verse from Luke 8, 11 through 12. Now the parable means this. The seed is the Word of God. Those along the path are those who hear. Then comes the devil who takes away the word from their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Yes. This is referring to those who receive salvation and uh, those who don't, of course. But there's still a lesson to learn here from Jesus, uh, which is simply we are to never come to the word of God or hear the word of God casually. Never come to the word of God with no expectation, with low expectation, without hunger, without desire. You have to come. You have to come with honor. You have to come to the word with reverence. When you come to hear the word, it's not just, oh, I'm in church again. Oh, I'm just here to hear the preacher again. No, God has something for you special, specific. Amen. He has that for you. That's yours. So prepare yourself to receive. Come with expectation. So, you know, we can include um, in, you know, number one, be ready. We can include be hungry in this. Be hungry. Because the Bible says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. For they shall be filled. Okay, let's go to number two now. Hit us, honey. Number two point? Yes. Okay. Uh, number two is be all in. 
So we have just be surrendered. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Luke 8, 13 says that those on the rock are the ones who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. For they believe for a while, then in the time of temptation, fall away. Mm -hmm. Yes. And welcome, Mumsy. Aww, from England. Mumsy. We got England. We got Holland. We got America. Yes. From all over. We love being international with you. Yes. Amen. So, yes. Um, they receive it with joy, but then they have no root. And then in the time of temptation, they fall away. There's a few points that may be made from this scripture, and we're actually going to read from a couple of different Gospels, too, to break this down for you. But the rocky and stony ground here is a partially prepared heart, but without removing all of your old ways so that the word can actually fully develop. And it is also a heart that is not all in. It's a heart that is half-heartedly following the Lord. If you want to accomplish anything with the Lord, with Jesus, yes. You have to have made the decision, not just he's my savior. Mm -hmm. He is your savior. He loves you. But you also have to, if you want to make an impact on this life, you have to have decided he is also my Lord yes. and I am going to serve, honor, obey, love him. Because, you know, the Bible also says that those who love him, obey him. Yes. It's not just a Sunday. No, it's not just so a every Sunday. Day, every day. Every day. Jesus. Because you might be the only form of Jesus that people see in your life. Amen. So how important is it to every day follow him, live for him? Well, that's also why you have to get Yelling. the plan and call of God for your life. Yes. Because if you're doing something that he hasn't called you to, mm -hmm. well, for first things first, you're not actually going to be satisfied or fulfilled. Right. The only fulfillment and satisfaction in life comes from actually doing the call of God, the plan of God. Yeah. So, but once you find that, once the Lord gives you that, then you have a drive and you have energy. When you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you, you'll struggle. Yeah. You'll struggle. Um, you know, you can't <laughs> you can't half follow God. You can't half be following the light and half be following the darkness. It doesn't work. You're going to stumble. You're going to stumble and fall. So in Luke 14, um, yeah, Luke 14. Do you want to read that, honey? Yes. Uh, and then verses 27 through 30. I feel like I have to like lean in a bit oh go for it sometimes i feel like i'm a little quiet you gotta enunciate sharing the mic <laughs> so it says uh, again luke 14 27 through 30 and whoever does not bear his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple for who among you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost to see mm -hmm. whether he has resources to complete it otherwise perhaps after he has laid the foundation and is not able to complete it all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to complete it. Counting the cost is simply that decision that you're all in and you're yes. going to obey in every area. Yes. Uh, and I would always say this, actually, when I would do altar calls and when I would talk to, like, you know, people. People want to talk about counting the cost of following God. Really, what's going to make life easier for you is if you count the cost of not following God. Yeah. Count the cost of doing your own thing. Count the cost of living your life the way you want to, not doing the call of God, and seeing where that gets you. It's it's a real simple decision when you know you have eternity waiting for you. And again, the Lord never puts something in your heart that you're not going to actually want to do. Mm -hmm. You might be intimidated to begin with because you actually have to, you know, grow right. and get out of your comfort zone. But yeah. again, that's nothing. That's nothing. When you actually start getting out of your comfort zone, you just become you become a naturally. Uh, uh, I don't want to, I don't have to phrase this. You become a naturally uncomfortable person. Yeah. And that's not saying you make everybody uncomfortable everywhere you go. Um, but you, you, you actually get something out of like not being comfortable. Yeah. You actually want to advance because advancement takes discomfort yes. and that's just discomfort to the flesh. That's just discomfort to, you know, wanting to just, you know, chill and relax. And easy. Easy. <laughs> easy count the cost amen yes. count the cost we love you all this morning let us know if you have any points to throw in there I let do. us know what you're getting for this my wife has a point she's going to throw it in there but let us know where you're watching if you have any points or anything you want to add we love you we want to hear from you we love hearing from you yeah, you're and, so bold i gotta be aggressive and like jumping in my no point. no do jump in but also i'm just gonna throw one thing in there we're gonna get another mic okay yeah, yeah. we're at the beginning we're gonna get her a mic so we'll have two mics because now we have two bushes as you can see we're growing <laughs> 
Felix is on the jury. He wanted to. Hey, Amen. Oh, I think your friend's watching. Um, <laughs> Michelle? Oh, love you, Michelle. Fearless. Amen. Glad She's you're here awesome. watching with us this morning. Amazing woman of God. Praise the Lord. Um, but yeah, uh, again, I was listening to Brother Jesse this morning, and he also made a good note, and this ties into Be All In. And it was also considering, you know, those who you surround yourself with. We've talked about, mm. you know, being around godly minded people and they do play a role in helping you to accomplish, you know, vision that God gives you. Psalms 1, 1 says, blessed is the man who walks not in Amen. the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. And he gave an example that when he financially was working towards building a building debt free, the Lord had placed direction you know, for him that he needed to find godly people mm -hmm. to help accomplish his vision. Yes. You see this in the word that it's important to have godly people because, Amen. you know, there could be a contractor who's the best in the city. Yeah. But if they're not a believer, there there comes risk because even maybe they could be a good, you know, a fine person, nothing really wrong with them. But there's that risk that, you know, the devil can use people even unknowingly to them. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why God puts this guard in the word Amen. for people to be able to accomplish those things. And that was the key that helped him to build it debt free. Amen. So I thought it was a pretty um, important to note because you want to pay attention to those who have seen breakthrough in their life. Totally. It's because he did have debt free yeah. on this building yeah. and that was an instruction God gave. So yeah. again, you pay attention to those who've gone before you pay attention to those who are accomplishing something and, and accomplished. Yeah. You pay, so. you pay attention to fruit. People say, don't judge. No, no judge fruit, yes. judge fruit. Look for the fruit. You look for the fruit you're looking for and follow. Yes. He Amen. Said, I mean, he said the same thing, not just financially, but he even God would lead him to not attend certain conferences because of hidden sin. And those ministers that weren't repented of. So you you listen to the Holy Spirit. He's going to lead you Amen. to the right people um, to really make the best, you know, come to pass. It's true. And I can say this, um, that like anytime I would get on fire for the Lord um, when I was younger, because again, I had a, a relationship with the Lord where I got saved when I was young, but then bumpy years where I'd be serving the Lord, not serving the Lord. Because I would, I loved the Lord. I just couldn't find any any churches where I was that was actually like on fire for the Lord. So I would go to like conferences, get on fire for the Lord, and then all I could find was religion. Yeah. So all that would happen is I would get on fire, but then I'd be surrounded by my old friends. Yeah. And then you know nothing wrong with all you know again lovely people, great people, but you know you ha in life can two walk together except they be agreed. Right. No, they cannot, and that's actually a scripture God gave me. There's, there's been a few times where God gave me a scripture to help me through, like um, specifically just gave me a scripture and was like, this is going to help you right now. And just before he sent me to Bible school, just before I made those decisions in life to be all in for him, he said to me, Amos 3.3. So I went and looked at it and it was like, can two walk together except they be agreed? And yeah. you come to realize, you know, you can't, you know, have the new while staying in the old. Yeah. So until I made the decisions and the leaps to grow in life and to move forward in life... I was always just going to fall back yeah. into those old things. So, you know, association is everything. And that is and a thing of be all in. I don't like, in a sense, befriend sinners. Because I know that's, that Jesus was a friend of sinners because you're reaching people. Yeah. It's not like total isolation. It, like, no, you reach you reach people and yeah. help people. But yeah. it, that's not who you hang out with. You're not going to, yeah. you know. It, it was just to clarify yeah. that you just, you, you still are reaching people, you know. Amen. Regardless. But it does, you know, it is important with, when you're, you know, building Amen. vision. It is. Amen. And I'm we with all have that time of needing to separate, especially when you're like newly saved. Totally. You, you, you need some time to grow and get strengthened. Amen. Um, before you can maybe handle being around stuff, you know, not that you go to the same lifestyle that you did, but no. uh, you can talk to people. It's help. It's being strong enough to help people out of where they are. Yes. yes. And if you're not in a place where you're strong enough to help people. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, I'm just going to read a couple of things here. Sander says, the best technology with awesome tech crew. Amen. The best technology with the most awesome. Again, this is the last. You're not going to see this for much longer, this background. <laughs> we did the best we could. We're trying to keep it just clean and looking okay because, you know, whatever. Yeah, it, it's 
super tired. Amen. And good morning, Noemi. Good. Oh, Noemi. We got more California joining us. I love us. you. Amen. We will see you all soon. Yeah, I'm we'll, so we'll see California Maybe soon. Week in like a week. We're Christmas. A day. We are Christmasing in California. Yeah. It's a great place to Christmas if what people are, you know, wondering. Yes. Amen. <laughs> I know a church is on fire. Yes, you do. Amen. Also, a bit of Volendam that rubbed off on you. What part of Volendam rub rubbed off on me? Because, of course, yeah, I lived in Volendam for a while. Volendam, Holland. Let me know what part you're talking about that rubbed <laughs> off on me. I'm curious. <laughs> Amen. Be all in. Okay, number three. Let's power through these now. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, so we had be surrendered. Was it be surrendered? Be all in. And then be all in. Yeah, but yes, be surrendered. Um, so number three, like be always watering. Yes. Be always watering. Hit them, honey. Literally. Oh, okay. Mark 4, 5 through 6 says, Some seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil and sprang and soon it sprang up because it did not have deep soil. But when the sun rose, uh, rose, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. The sun scorching is simply the effects of everyday life. It's yeah. the, the effects of the sun and the heat. In, in the Bible, that's referencing just everyday life, the toils yeah. of life. And some people get, you know, swept under those things, and they can't handle the heat. Um, but there's a remedy. The Word of God gives every believer a remedy for not only just like, you know, you don't have to endure the effects of the heat. No, no, no. He gets you out of the effects of the heat. Amen? Yes. It's the word of God and the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Yes. In Ephesians 5.26, in Ephesians 5.26, it says, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Yes. The word of God waters. So you know what? If you need an area in life where you need more fruit, where you need more harvest, water it with the word. Yes. Always be watering. You know, we're talking about the hundredfold. You have to be hungry and dedicated to be watering your life with what the word has. Yeah, because the word enriches your mind. It, you know, broadens your mind and it quickens your mind. Amen. The things of God. Yeah. Yes, it does. That was Jason. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Again, if I, if I have something to say, might have been inspired by Brother Jesse. That's okay, honey. That's great. But it was a good point. It is a good point. I, I have no problem stealing other people's points if it's going to help people. Yes. Or you just you just tell people that you stole the point and then you, you get you get the like... point. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Um, you kind of have to get over that sometimes. Just because you didn't say something first doesn't mean it's not good and not worth repeating. Yeah. Uh, you know, we learn from the best. So you know, you're with us right now, and we're learning from the best, giving you the best. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. And then Acts three nineteen, and I'll read a little bit from the Amplified here. So repent and change your mind and purpose. Turn around and return to God that your sins may be erased, blotted out and wiped clean. That times of refreshing, of recovery from the effects of the heat, of reviving with fresh air may come from the presence of the Lord. God's presence, the Holy Spirit revives. It refreshes. It brings all of those things. So the thing of it is, is that now we have Christ living on the inside of us and we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. So we have the word and the Holy Spirit that we have to never be, you know, panting or like, oh, goodness, it's just getting so, you know, the world is getting so this way. No, we're separate. We're, we're no, no longer a part of that. We are watered. We, we are refreshed. Of God Amen. To be able to handle what's going on around you. Amen. And yeah, and we don't just handle, we, we dominate. We don't. That's not what I meant. I know. <laughs> Let me correct you. <laughs> Very gently. Um, number four. Hit him with it, honey. Number four. Be always steadfast. Yeah. And then Mark 4, 16 through 17. Others likewise are seed sown on rocky ground, mm -hmm. who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness, but have no root in themselves and so endure for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution rises for the word's sake, immediately they fall away. Keep reading, honey. Uh, and so we noted that you have to have a soft heart, but you need to have thick skin. A um, lot of people have the, have it backwards. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, especially Christians too, they have a thick heart that, you know, difficult to penetrate, and they have very soft skin. Yeah, very sensitive. Very sensitive. You can offend anybody. Um, yes, taking dominion for sure. Amen. 
So you need, we had this kind of saying in Bible school, it's like, you need a heart of flesh and the skin of a rhino. Yes. Of course, not literally. I'm not asking you to get gray, hard, flaky skin. But you need to literally not let what people say and the things people say affect you yeah. and take you out. Because criticism and persecution, they come when you're living a holy life. Mm -hmm. But again, there's the reward from living a holy life. Yeah, Pastor Ronnie that says that. Yes, amen. But the, the, the benefit of living a holy life far outweighs any criticism, any persecution. And, you know, this is another pastor only one. God can only use you to the level of criticism that you can handle. Yes. So how far can you go in life? Well, tell me how much, how much can you handle from other people yeah. telling you you're doing something God, wrong? God had told Pastor Rodney that because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of uh, ministers, they kind of like cut their... I guess, fruit short because of, you know, fear of people, fear of it's people's true. opinions. And so that's why God tells us to, you know, you know, well, that, what he thinks. Yeah, that's why the book know. of Galatians, it says, can I still please God and be trying to please men? Yes, yes. The answer is no. The answer is no. It's not, it's not like a rhetorical question, you know, it is a rhetorical question in a way, but the answer is no. Yeah, I was trying to think of scripture. Yeah. Like, Galatians, I got you, baby. I you got, got you. Me. And that's also, again, we've been talking a lot about who we listen to and who we love to. And that's why fathers in the faith are important because yes. they already took the hits ahead of time. They, they paved the way to make it easy for you. It's like, you know, if we had lived, you know, if, if this was how many, however many years ago, like the 1700s, first of all, you wouldn't be watching us right now. We'd be sat in our hut talking to a shell hoping that it reached people in the ocean or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to be funny, but you know what I'm saying? That we would not be talking to you. We'd, we'd be trying to write a message. We, yeah, there we go. We'd be writing message or putting it in a bottle or we'd be trying to gather everybody around a campfire. But when we have been driving around the country and like we've done long road trips, it amazes me the road structure and everything that has to be built in this country. Because yeah. you, you can imagine the pioneers when they had to come when there was no roads. I think it sucks when you have to drive to California now. That's like a two-day journey, and I'm in a car, and I'm like, my goodness, this is a long time. Hey, America's like a baby nation. Yes, so it's a baby nation, respect, but it, like, well, it is, but like also, falling out of but be, enough. exactly. But then you imagine the pioneers who had to make the road, had to cut their way through mountains. Yeah. So that's like the fathers in the faith. They came ahead, and they already, they literally carved the road. So now all you got to do is jump on the highway they already made because they have made the way clear and plain for you. Right. And you know what? On that path, you'll still hear the dogs barking. You'll still hear people yelling at you from the side. My goodness, I was getting a text the other day because some stupid stuff on social media. But then again, you know, if you're on social media and you say something stupid, then, you know, I commented and got some attacks back. But that's just, yeah, that's, that's that's just, how, you, that's just how you play the game, amen? <laughs> So learn from your fathers in the faith. Honor them. And remember this about critics. Remember this about critics. No one goes to a critic to be fed. Right. Do you ever go to a restaurant and say, can you send me, you know, what, what is the critic special today? No. A critic has nothing to offer but an opinion. Yeah. And half the time, critics actually are so jaded they feel like they are the doorkeepers, the gatekeepers. They don't even enjoy the thing they view anymore. Now, you go to a chef to be fed. We're feeding you the word today, amen? So don't worry about anybody else. Uh, another thing uh, Brother Jesse noted is that people that scorn have a shallow purpose in life. Mm -hmm. So it's like sometimes the people kind of lash out, kind of feel like, you know, Amen. They question their purpose. So not always, it's not every case, but just consider those who kind of are continually criticizing you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't have yeah. Uh, water off a duck's back. Amen, Sanda. Yeah. Do it all the time. It's good driving. Walk with God with your head held high and a smile no matter what comes our way. Sure Amen. Comes I don't see that one either. Um... Critics aren't doing what you do. They only talk about what you do. Yeah. The only people I want to hear from are those doing what I do. Because they can actually give me advice. They can actually help me. Yeah. 
I have those above me and I have those doing the same to a level, but you know, ahead and similar, we're all pushing forward together. Those people I listen to because they're doing it. Amen. Number five, be sober minded. Go for it, honey. Luke 8, 14, that which fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to maturity. Amen. So this is really breaking down this little bit here. Yeah. There's cares, the cares of this world, mm -hmm. the deceitful, deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. Yeah. So, you know, cares, cares come when you don't, um, bring self-control and prayer into your life. Yeah. Dake said that in his in his in his Bible. So you know, being sober-minded is very much about that life of being watchful and being prayerful yeah. and self-controlled. Amen. Yes. And then there's deceitful the 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 the, the, uh, the deceitfulness of riches. I had trouble speaking there. Yeah, duh. Duh, duh, duh. The deceitfulness of riches. Um, and Dake, again, in his Bible, broke these down into a few different areas. Do you want to read those, honey? Was it... This little thing here, yeah. Okay. So, they broke it down, and the deceitful riches are lack of trust in God, mm -hmm. trust in their riches, mm -hmm. pride in their success, their boastings, lack of helping the poor, desiring only more riches refusal to obey God because again God has no problem with you being rich but he has a problem with you being deceived by riches and yes. you being a person who loves yes. money yeah. God has no problem with you being blessed because God wants to bless you the blessing of God makes one rich and adds one adds no sorrow but the deceitful riddleness of riches that this verse is talking about there you can see the characteristics yes. pride in their success they don't trust God they trust in their success they trust in their money they boast they don't help the poor they only care about more riches and they don't obey the Lord. That's the deceitfulness of riches. And that's the love of money. Yes. That's right. And then, of course, lusts is being driven by the flesh and anything that is not a godly desire that tries to drive you. Right. Lust is a driving to do something. Yes. Uh, and in 1 John 2, 15 and 16, it really breaks these down. If you want to read that. Honey. Yes. That's, um, and it states, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lusts, uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Amen. So that's actually breaking down those things it's talking about in this scripture now. Yeah. And yes, well, uh, just yet, yeah, the love of money, of course, is the root of all evil. Yes. The love of money. Because again, money is not an evil thing. Money is just a tool. You can do good things with money, and you can do bad things with money. Yes. Um, so it's just, again, it's your intention, it's your heart, it's what you're actually going to do with it. Yes. Which is why it's important to find those prospering who actually do accomplishing great things. Yes. Amen, yeah. You'll serve God or you'll serve money. Serve right. mammon, right, Susie? Yes. Um, it's good. It's amen. So be on guard and watch and pray against these things. You know, God, observe your heart. Amen. Yeah. I was going to note that, um, you know, you don't, you, you like, you can water down your authority by taking the devil's stuff. And then what happens is you will lack confidence coming up against it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then a lot of people struggle with that is that they kind of, they're kind of halfway in and out yeah. and they keep dabbling. And then when something is happening in their life and they're trying to use their authority and pray against it, you just like automatically know inside like oh, i know i shouldn't be doing it and then you, again you lack that confidence but it's just a trap of the enemy Amen. that's why it is so important to be obedient to the things of god amen to be all in that's right amen and then so luke 21 34 let's um skip let's go down okay, to yeah, so let's go to first peter okay yeah so first peter 4 7 says the end of all things is near therefore be sullen and sober amen. so you can pray and then, yeah, be sober and watchful because your adversary, the devil, walks around as a roaring lion, yes. seeking whom he may devour. He's not a roaring lion, but be watchful, be sober minded, be prayerful. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we're going to we're going to uh, power through some of these next things.
for some reason our laptop did not charge properly last night so we have 12 percent battery so we're gonna <laughs> we'll like have a little kind of fun countdown with the laptop here <laughs> is there a way to plug it in no oh, okay number six be uh, be diligent number six be diligent because this kind of like falls into this one now we're talking yeah. about being watchful and praying yeah um being diligent means observing your heart and making sure no rocks and thorns are ever allowed in there. Yeah. Observing your your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a point here, honey? Um, you can keep going. I'll keep it going for a second. Like, okay. So again, this also is with the word of God, because again, the sower sows the word. So the word is going to be the thing, the word and the way you apply the word and take the word and obey the word is what's going to bring that 100 fold increase. And I'm speaking to you all today and you are all... As you follow the Lord, yes. as you follow the whole leading of the Holy Spirit, but as you obey the word of God and a new fresh desire for the word and a hunger for the word to receive it and obey it, you are going to have a hundredfold right. increase in your life. We're giving you the secrets here today. Amen. amen. So don't take these lightly. Take them in. Yes. Because with the word of God, you allow it to judge your life and the fruit of your life. Nobody wants to be judged in this day and age, right? Only God can judge me. Anyone who says only God can judge me, you hope they make heaven. Because really, it just means they're living stupidly and they're just going to be like, hey, I do what I want. I do what I want. You can live that way. I'm just saying it's probably not going to have a good end. Yeah. I mean, Christians are, you know, called to be leaders. Yes. You know, so, uh, you know, qualities of a leader are, you know, being diligent and mm -hmm. disciplined. Yeah. And, People automatically look for those qualities in people. You, you see the um, kind of that example with athletes. It's like people watch athletes because of really because of how disciplined and diligent they are in their profession. People want to they want to buy the sneakers to jump up like Mike. You know they, <laughs> but that, yeah. that's the thing is that they're they you know they work hard and it's the same thing with people want to people want to watch some somebody do something they can't but yes. that they dream of. Yeah, yeah. Is there ex they're, you know, they value excellence. Yeah, they do. But again, we're here to tell you today that again, in, in the call of God, you can achieve everything that the greatest have achieved. Yes. You know, you don't, you know, you don't have to get sneakers and try and jump like Mike. Um, but you can attain the heights that heaven has for you. You can and you will. Because it's been paid for you. But also know, like my wife was saying, it's like, there's a standard that comes from excelling in the, in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. There's a standard that comes from advancing in life with the Lord. There's a high, there's a high standard. The Bible even says not everybody should be teachers, because every, you know, you go on Facebook, everybody's a teacher on Facebook, aren't they? Everybody is like, I'm going to tell you what this scripture means and what that scripture means, and this is how you should be doing things. Teaching is a ministry gift given by the Lord, mm -hmm. and not everyone should be quick to be preachers, teachers, because teachers receive a greater judgment. Amen. There's a truth. It's just, it's, it's true. Amen. Amen. It's good. Yeah. 10%. We can do this. <laughs> the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, and let us know how you're thinking about this. Again, throw in some stuff there because we love you guys. Um, if you have anything to add, let us know. Um, you know, scriptures, comments, please throw them at us. We'll read them because we love you. Yeah. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11.31, it says... If we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Yeah. So take the word of God and be violent with the word against your life. Yes. Don't try and look for excuses. Look to improve. Yes. What in your life is producing fruit? What in your life is not producing fruit? That's right. What is the word telling you you need to change? And what, you know, is what you need to increase in? Amen? Amen. Be that way with yourself. Number seven, be always hearing. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you need to be listening to preaching and teaching every single day. You need to surround yourself with the word of God. You need to be reading the word of God, but you also need to surround yourself with good teachers and preachers who are going to help you move forward. Amen. I loved what Pastor Michael Weber in California. Oh, we know him. <laughs> We might have noted this, but he, he made a great point that when he was in Bible school, he listened to a lot of preaching. And then the Lord directed him, like when he left Bible school, to continue that set. And so he, he mentioned that he, would, he listens to preaching like three hours a day mm -hmm. because 
that was, I guess, the... What's, sim- what's, least, sim- what's similar to? You know, where that was like the set kind of time that really, you know, was impactful, that he was continually hearing the word of God, mm-hmm. we did, his yeah, mindset we, on the things of God. We wake up and we throw preaching on. Throughout yeah. the day, we're throwing preaching on because we want to keep ourselves surrounded by the good yeah. stuff. I know worship- I've seen a difference Amen. when I have yeah. yeah. Worship music's great, but also worship, you know, you need times of worshiping and praising, but you need to be more filling yourself with the word. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Bible school was three hours of, of teaching a day. Yeah. We did, th- I calculated this once. We went to Bible school and the, Bi- the, the the Bible school, River University is three years long, but the final year is an internship. So it's two years of teaching. And I calculated once that your basic average kind of church attendance, that two years of Bible school was the equivalency of about 40 years of sitting in a regular church. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, no wonder you go to Bible school and it's like, whoa, yeah. So when you, you leave Bible school, that's probably what, you know, Pastor Michael oh, yeah. felt God like you need to still be. Well, like, if you want to stay at the same level. level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and here's the thing as well is that hearing only comes from intentional listening. Hearing only comes from intentional listening. You don't just throw stuff on the back and ignore. You need to be intentional. Yes. You know, and many people, many people come to preaching and be like, I've heard this. They hear a scripture and it's like, I know this scripture. No, you don't. You don't know what they're about to preach. You don't know what they're about to, what revelation they're about to bring. You don't know. And if you think you know a scripture, the word is alive. So even if you know a scripture, God will hit you with something new. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Never come to the word casually or like, I know that it's, it'll kill you. It, it'll kill. I'm, I'm being real right now. It'll damage you so much. What? What? Sorry. It'll kill you. <laughs> I love you, honey. You look beautiful today. I love you in pink. Thanks. Just throwing that out there right now. Just having a moment there. He does like me. She looks good in every color. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Don't care. So many believers, they think they've already heard it. And they think they know it. So humility is actually linked with hearing. So you have to come to the word with humility and say, I'm going to hear this. I'm going to listen. You don't just want to literally, in the word it says, of course we know we possess all knowledge. Yet mere knowledge causes us to be puffed up, to be bared loftily and proud. But love, affection, and goodwill edifies and builds up and encourages one to grow to his full stature. That's 1 Corinthians 8, 1 in the Amplified. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 in the Amplified. Amen, Judith. Always teaching, always learning and growing. Okay, we're going we're gonna to rock it through these yes. next few, okay? Yes, yes. Be consistent, because yes. consistency makes for good ground. Yes. Hit him with it, honey. Luke eight fifteen. But the seed on the good ground are those who, having heard the word, kept it in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. Bear fruit. So consistency with will patience. come with the patience you develop along with your faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And the Bible also says in Galatians six nine. You know, we you'll all know this scripture, but I'm going to say it again. Let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in um, due season we will reap if we do not give up. Yes. Consistency brings fruit. Yes. There's, there's a patience aspect to faith, yeah. which is faith, you know, is that you have it now. And patience is I'm going to act. I'm going to act in good character yeah. and maturity during the times, even when I might not see what I'm believing for and what I know I have. Yes. Because faith believes it now. But they might not manifest that second. Yeah. Again, you believe it does. But just because it doesn't, if, and if it doesn't manifest that second, you might be like, oh, it didn't work. No, no, the patience part there is, no, it's done. It's yeah. now. The patience is actually what keeps you in faith. Yeah. That it's now. Patience is a key element of faith because it's the part where it actually says, no, it's now. Even if you didn't see it, it's done. Because yeah. then you do see it. Amen. Yeah. Sorry, I got very animated there. <laughs> Amen. I love it. Yeah, Hebrews eleven six is um, you know rewards those who diligently seek Him. Amen. God, you you see this pattern throughout scri- Scripture that there is a reward system when it comes to following God. Amen. And I, I think of like this kind of clear example where a parent with their child, like a child, could be screaming their head off for something they they want, and what does a good parent do? They say, you know. Hey, you need to apologize for your attitude. You, know, yeah. you need to stop this yeah. and ask nicely. Mm-hmm. You know, that's their response because why? 
they don't want their child learning that behavior and getting what they want. That's right. And it's the same concept with God. Amen. Is that with your, you know, crying out to him with, you know, not a thankful heart, yep. not, you know, not in faith. You know, he doesn't want to, he wants to bless you, but there's a reason why he doesn't bless that reaction. That's right. Is because if you were receiving that, you know, and that sort of behavior, Amen. it would just kind of validate that. So again, it, it comes down to posture of your heart, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and that's why you do is because you want to keep thankful and in faith. Amen. You know, not with a bad attitude. That's good. So, that, no, that's but good. It's, it's the same concept with like, you know, earthly parents and children. It's true. That's good. That's really good, honey. Uh, yeah. Be imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Because consistency also brings with it a good name. So those are all good points. And we're uh, coming to the final point here. We love you guys. Let us know, um, you know, what your favorite point was, what's yes. spoken to you today. Um, again, throw things out there because we just love this time with you. You're all amazing. Um, we love growing with you during this. Amen. Um, hallelujah. Number nine, the final point here. And this is going to help bring this hundredfold. Again, I'm speaking to people who during the next year, you are going to exponentially see multiplication, prosperity, growth on every side. On every side, your life is going to look. You can't even calculate. What does your life look like a hundredfold better right now from one year today? I believe the, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to minister to your heart right now what that looks like. Because that's yours. Imagine what this setup is going to look like a hundredfold better one year from today that's right. amen we believe it amen in our own office in our new place thank you jesus number nine is be obedient be obedient because you have to be obedient to the word and the leading of the holy spirit and obedience actually keeps your heart tender and soft to the word obedience to the word not just again you take it in then you do it obey it walk it out Amen. Receive that. Amen. We love you all. Also, also with obedience, it you know your actions can be quick to listen to God. Yep. And that can lead to your breakthrough. Amen. So, um, you know, be quick we, to we obey. We noted with Dr. Miles and Merrill that visions die because people misuse their time. Yeah. So that's another thing is that like uh, obedience can be an accelerator to the vision that God has. Some for of God. the things that God has for you have a timestamp. Like, you have to do it now. Yeah. Because yeah, you have to do it within that like time of you know the direction amen so yeah you can you can lose out on some things to the god but also uh, to the word of god but also to this the spirit amen so obedience it keeps your heart plowed and soft to be good ground yes you know in the bible it says um in matthew 6 21 obedience is key amen um thank you noemi uh, matthew 6 21 for where your treasure is there's your heart also and a heart that treasures God walks obediently to the commands and to the covenant. Again, that's talking about finances. Um, it talks about finances to a great degree, but it's in every area. Amen. But giving, giving is what keeps your heart eager to keep giving. Like, how do you get a giving heart? You give. Yes. The more you give, the more eager you are to give. Amen. Anyone who's a giver out there can give an amen because you know that's true. You can give a hallelujah hands. Because yeah. that's the truth. When you stop giving, it shuts up the desire to. So whatever you actually want to keep soft and, um, you know, soft ground in your heart, keep doing it. Amen. The things that you stop doing hardens. You want to stay soft. And that also means obedience because disobedience is the opposite. In Hebrews 3, and we're rounding up here now. Um, rounding up here now. Our battery has 5%. Yeah, we, can it. <sighs> we can make it. Amen. You're with us. We've got 5% left on this thing. And we're, we're rounding up here. We love you. We're glad we spent... We're so glad that you choose to spend like, you know, an hour with us on these days. So and yeah, in the future, you'll get to do that plenty and it's going to look amazing. And, you know, we're going to rejoice and we'll be like, these were the original people who were with us. Amen. Amen. All the other lucky, lo- I'm kidding, all the other group that come along. Not teasing. Um, Hebrews 3, 7 through 9. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of the temptation in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my work for 40 years. Yes. Disobedience brings a hardness of heart. Yes. Mine keeps falling out. What keeps falling out? Yes, I, I blame Pastor Jonathan too. Not teasing. 
Amen. Oh, okay, yeah. His teachings drew my battery today. Yeah, our battery too, amen. That's okay, you can always go back later on. We love you. Um, disobedience hardens your heart, and obedience softens your heart, amen? That really is just a key. What you want to keep doing, you will be softened. What you actually, you know, all say it with us right now. Father, as I obey, give me a desire and a greater desire to keep obeying and to always obeying your word in every area, in every way. Keep my heart soft and tender to the word and to the leading of the Holy Spirit to which I will obey. In Jesus' name. Again, you guys are going to see in exponential growth. You guys are going to see a 100-fold return on your life. Because that's what it says in Luke 8. That's what it said. You are going to have a 100-fold return on your life when that seed, the Word of God, is sown into good ground. Say that with us today. I am good ground. Repeat that with us again. I am good ground. You are good ground, honey. Okay, you didn't say it back to me. Okay, never mind. I was looking for some reciprocation there. She's like, yes, I am good ground. <laughs> no, <I'm> t- <laughs> Amen. So these keys are going to help you have a soft heart, good ground, keeping you in faith and obedience for a life that's going to be 100%, 100 times, 100 fold more prosperous, increasing, increasing, Amen. advancing, multiplying. Amen. Yes, Santa, you are good ground. Yes. Glad you're able to watch before work today. Yes, amen. Glad you were able to be with us today. So, and again, we're rounding up here. We love you all. If anyone is watching today and they don't know that Jesus Christ is the Lord of their heart, then we want to quickly pray with us. We have a couple more things we're going to do. So stay with us for a second. Oh, blessings, Pastor Randy. Hello, Pastor Randy. So good to see you, sir. Um, If anyone is watching today and you don't know that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your heart, you have never asked him, confessed him to be the Lord and Savior of your heart and repented of sin, and if you don't even know that heaven's your home today, then we're going to pray with you right now. So anyone watching this today that doesn't know that heaven is your home, that Jesus is the Lord of your heart, just pray with us quickly, okay? We're going to say this a real simple prayer. Say with me, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, set me free. Thank you that you died on a cross. I believe you have risen from the dead and that you're coming back for me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and give me a passion for the lost and a hunger for the things of God. And say, I am saved. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. And I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. If you prayed that for the first time, um, on the thing here, you see Faith and Fire International. If you prayed for the first time, either comment, let us know, or go to our website, write to us there, because we have a gift we want to give you. We love you. We want to bless you in your walk with the Lord. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, And just quickly, um, we're going to pray. Yes. Uh, We also just want to give you all an opportunity to give today. The favorite part of any any teaching, of of any time. If you want to join with us in this ministry, Faith and Fire International, um, we want you to give an opportunity for you to do that. So many of you that are watching, you're givers, you're with us, um, you've been incredible. Um, but if you want to partner with us and the mission and what we're doing, it's good ground. We're seeing souls saved. We're, you know, doing all kinds of things all over the place, seeing people's lives touched and changed by the power of the Holy Ghost, healings, prosperity increasing in people's lives, and feeding the poor in different countries. So you can partner with us today. And the ways to partner, of course, are on the screen right now. PayPal.me forward slash FFI give. Um, Venmo, it's at give FFI. Cash app, it's dollar sign give FFI. Um, if you want to give from your phone from Zelle, you can simply um, send it to 309-807-8216. And anyone that wants to monthly partner with us, you can do from Tidely. Um, you know, I'm saying this because we're putting this out there. Um, we are believing and we've been seeing incredible increase for 100 partners to be, um, giving 100 a month to help us see the gospel, um, go forward and for us to do everything we're doing. So 100 partners to give 100 a month. If you want to be one of those partners, we'd love to have you. We don't take it lightly. We just, you know, we're so honored when people want to join with us and we pray for them and they're going to bless the increased. 
If you want to do that through Tidely, you go into Tidely.com, um, Tidely, and go uh, Faith and Fire International. So yes, we love you. We bless you. We're so glad you were with us this morning. Yes, we love you all. We love you all. And um, we'll see you on Friday. Yes. We'll see you Friday. It's going to be a great teaching. Love you guys. Love you, Sandra. Yeah, love you, Naomi. Everyone her. watching with us today, we right. love you. Be blessed. And uh, reach out to us God if you need anything, everybody. okay? We're here for you. Love you. Love you. See you Friday.